Hey YouTube, what is going on guys over on the More Swag channel? So for today's video, what I got for you guys is the number one movement guide in Warzone 3, ladies and gentlemen. This video is actually going viral right now. A lot of people are trying to figure out the movements, the, the nitty gritty, the slide cancels. <sighs> Today, my boy Dream, so I got y'all. Make sure I hit that subscribe button, drop like if this helps you guys out a lot. Without further ado, let's get into it. I know there are a lot of people out there going through the pain of getting slammed over and over again by good players, and they aren't sure what to do to get better. And I know that because that person getting slammed was me just a few years ago. But after many months of frustration, <laughs> I figured out how to improve my movement, and now I consistently drop high kill games. So stick around until the end of this video because I'm gonna explain exactly what you need to do to become a movement king. Damn, so the first step was something blender. that I didn't learn for a long time. You see, I watched movement tutorials and I learned the basics on YouTube, but what I found out was it didn't really help me win many gunfights. In fact, I started losing a lot more at first because I was trying to use flashy movement. And it wasn't until after losing a lot of these gunfights, I realized that I needed to start training like an athlete to start getting better. You see, <laughs> athletes spend a lot of time doing drills and they practice the the skills that they're going to use in a game and call of duty is no different movement is not just a i'm gonna keep it a bean chat with y'all i'm gonna keep it a bean doing drills i'm gonna just be hard as dream strike is probably like i'm sure it's great type shit but like doing drills just get out in the field and try it it's about learning the buttons you need to press you have to practice like you're gonna play in a game so for the first step i'm gonna take you through all the movements you need to learn and give you seven practice drills and then i'm gonna show you how to put all of them together to break your opponent's ankle it's good for someone who doesn't play eight hours a day I feel that. I just feel like it's just like, it, you just gotta play. You just, the more you play, the more you're just gonna get better at it type shit. Now the first mechanic to learn is the slide cancel. Now to do it, we go into a tactical sprint, we press our crouch button to start a slide, and then we press jump to cancel it. It's just two buttons. And you can change the length of your slide by adjusting how long you wait to cancel it with the second button. And there's several reasons why we slide cancel. The first is that we get peeker's advantage. Because Ooh. when we slide around a corner, it takes time for that data to go to the servers and reach the other player, which gives us a really small advantage where we can see that player before he can see that us crazy? and it gives us That's the ability so to get the first shot in a gunfight and we can also use it to break cameras which is basically just a term for faking out your opponent and causing them to lose track of where you are which can <laughs> oftentimes get you easy kills that was kind of mixy it makes you a little bit harder to hit because you can change your momentum very quickly and a sliding character model is a little bit smaller than Ooh. one standing up so to practice like how we would in a game the first thing we're going to work on is slide challenging a corner for peeker's advantage you first want to find a target and you want to start behind a wall and then slide cancel out past the wall and shoot at the target now i like using the it's crazy because I really think like for every Call of Duty from now on forever will always have slide cancer or some sort of movement. It's, just, it's like one of those things that just like it has to be in the game. First off, you want to make sure that your crosshair is accurate as you go around the corner and is as close as you can get oh, it. To it looks the like aimbot. It looks like aimbot. Yes. You want to have to make as little adjustment as possible when you go to shoot your gun. This is called your centering. And the second thing to be aware of is how far you slide past the wall. You want to practice sliding out far and you also want to practice stopping close to the wall because depending on the situation you're in, it might be useful to do either one. The important thing is you want to be in complete control of where you stop after the wall. Now, before I move on to the next drill, it's important to talk a little bit about how we actually learn new skills. And we simply learn new skills through repetition and through feedback. And what a lot of people don't realize is you can actually develop bad skills if your practice sucks. Because how you practice is exactly how you're gonna play in a game. If you rush through this drill and don't practice it correctly, you're repeating and reinforcing bad habits that are gonna follow you into a game and you're probably gonna die a lot in gunfights. So you wanna make sure that you're taking time on these drills. And it can be extremely helpful to record yourself and watch it back yeah, to analyze 32? things that you're doing wrong. I remember when I first started practicing like this, it was really hard. Because when you're shooting at a target, you don't get aim assist. And there were a lot of times when I wanted to just give up and play the game. But that's why whenever a drill is hard for me, I try to remember the three S's. Now the first S stands for simplify. Let's say I was working on this drill and my shot was all over the place. Well, the first thing that I would do is I would stop shooting and I would just work on my centering. And now there's less buttons that I have to press and less steps that I have to focus on so I can really work on the first things that I need to do correctly. You always wanna simplify something when you're having trouble with it. Like for instance, if you were teaching someone math, you wouldn't start with calculus. You would start with the basics. True, true. And as dumb as it sounds, learning the- I took calculus, by the way, I took AP Calc. I got a 81 in it, a B minus, but slide cancel isn't any different. And while I'm simplifying things, I would also be slowing them down. And this is the second S. You have to remember that our brains are hardwired. I think I'm cat I dead ass to calculus the fuck over, and over again the wrong way. That's the habit that you're building and you're going to do that in a real game. So realistically, if you've never practiced slide canceling like this before, it may take several hours of practice to start to get it. Just set aside 
Chat, why the fuck would y'all think I'm lying about taking AP Calc? Why would I claim that shit? I did ask took AP Calc. I did. Senior year of high school, took AP Calc. I was smart at math. Everything else I was not good at. I took AP Calc. Yes, I had a life before this. Chill on 15 me. 15 minutes a day and practice it until you're hitting the... Did I pass the AP test though? Nope target most of the time and that's the final s shoot accurately i know that i've mastered a drill or an exercise and that i can move on to practicing something else when i'm consistently hitting my shots if you look at this clip here i'm getting shot and i know that i'm getting chased out of a window Ooh. so to break this guy's camera i simply fake like i'm going one way out of the window to break his line of Damn. sight and then i immediately slide back the other way to shoot him in the back so the important skill here is you need to be able to do 180 degree turns with your slide cancel so for this drill you're going to start with your back to the target and you want to slide cancel away from it and turn and shoot at it and remember the three s's apply to this drill too if you're having trouble do like what i did before on the last exercise and the important thing to work on for this drill is you want to get to the point where you're not significantly overshooting or undershooting your target as you spin around to shoot at it Ooh. you also want to try to get your spin to be as fast as possible without losing any accuracy and once you have these drills down you should start shooting at moving targets if you have multiplayer it's great because you can set up bots and instead of just mindlessly running around and shooting at them you can just practice your slide cancels you can challenge the bots at each corner and why, try do they, to break their why do they look like my lobbies i have all my custom game settings that i use for why do they look like my lobbies chat but for those of you who don't have multiplayer plunder works really well too just hot drop into an area of the map where there are a lot of teams and try to push them while using the slide cancel as much as possible remember repetition is what builds skill and that's why i strongly believe that if you focus on learning one movement at a time and become insanely good at doing just that one thing you're going to be way better than the person who tries to learn everything at once and is just okay at each skill so don't be afraid to take a few weeks practicing your slide cancels for 15 to 30 minutes a day before you move on to some of these other movements Good movement mm. okay so now that i've broken down my system for learning these movements and drills i'm going to go through the rest of these skills a little bit quicker so the next movement you need to know is the jump shot to do it you simply jump while you're in a gunfight and it can be really effective to help you get more kills because you raise your character's hitbox so your opponent will hopefully be shooting your legs while you're getting higher damage chest or headshots. True, true. I think this movement works great inside buildings where you don't have a lot of room to move around, but it also works great for challenging corners because if someone is, for instance, on the other side of a wall, you can jump past their aim and Damn. be harder to hit because they're going to have to move their crosshair pretty it's kind of crazy to see like when you when you do movement mechanics and, and you watch the other player's perspective like bro like like if they're a bot bro they probably think you're fucking superman you fly around the corner you slide cancel like the perspective is always crazy like he flew around that corner pretty far to get on target i typically like to aim at people's chests because when i use the jump shot i end up getting headshots to deal more damage unfortunately bunny hopping isn't that great in this game because you don't go very far on the second jump but anything you can do to add a little bit more movement into your game is typically a good thing if you I don't can think add bunny hopping shots. to be honest okay so moving on the next two movements are really helpful when you find yourself behind a half wall or an object that you can shoot over now the first movement is the crouch snaking you basically duck and then stand up repeatedly behind cover which makes it harder for someone to shoot you i think they pretty much uh like they they kind of patch snaking a little bit I don't know. I feel like you still snake. This can be extremely useful in a game when you want to hard scope a target, but you don't want to just be standing still. Now, contrary to the name, you don't actually want to spam your crouch button. What you want to do is you want to press crouch and then jump to stand back up. This is way faster than just pressing your crouch button repeatedly. Now for this drill, I like to pick one or two targets and basically I'm just going to crouch spam and try to shoot each target. It's a simple drill, but what you'll need to work on is the rhythm of pressing the buttons to go up and down as fast as possible. If you do it wrong, you're going to jump on accident, which which is exactly what you don't want. And the next movement to learn is snaking. Now this is very okay. similar to the crouch spam and it works well in the same situations, but it's basically an exploit in the game. So you're actually even a little bit harder to hit. Now to do <laughs> it, you wanna go into a prone position and you immediately sprint out of it repeatedly. I like to roll my left analog stick in somewhat of a half circle to stop myself from moving forward. Now the button timings for this are a little bit tricky. So don't get discouraged if you don't get it right away. Now snaking did get a slight nerf in one of the recent updates, it did, yeah. but it's still really useful in a lot of situations. I like to use it a lot when i'm playing for information like for instance if i get shot in the back and i'm not sure if a team's pushing me or i'm not sure where i got shot from i like to snake before i start to heal up so i know what's going on around me and you can see that i do that in this clip here and i eventually locate the person Ooh. who shot at me and then i go to challenge him but if we get back to the drill just like with the crouch spam give yourself a target or two to shoot at while practicing and once again once you're good with these static targets just go shoot some bots or real players and try to use these movements as much as possible in the game
Okay, and now on to a Call of Duty classic, the drop shot. To do it, you simply hold down your crouch button to go prone in a gunfight. This movement is great when you're in a close range fight because when you go prone, you completely disappear from your opponent's screen. This works the best up close because your opponent has to look down really far to see you compared oh. to if you do it at a longer range where they don't have to move their gun nearly as far to get some shots on you. And to practice this, it's really easy. I like to just shoot at a target while I go prone. And what's important here is that I move my aim up as I'm laying down because what I don't want is to go prone and then start hitting lower damage leg shots on my opponent. I still want to hit those chest or head shots. Now while drop shotting is great to surprise someone in a gunfight, it does have some disadvantages. First off, your opponent is more likely to land head shots on you because yeah. your head is now the closest thing to their gun. Yep. And secondly, when you go prone, you can't strafe or look around very easily. So whenever an opponent does this to me, one of the first that things pins? I try to do is jump and strafe around because you become extremely hard to track for the player that's laying down so while working on this exercise and shooting the target make sure to also practice quickly getting out of the prone position by pressing your sprint button and holding forward on your left analog stick and with this game engine you can actually do it surprisingly fast now something that used to be a little bit busted in this game oh. was the instant drop shot if you were attack sprinting forward you could immediately pull back on your left thumbstick while going prone and your character would lay down almost instantly now i'm pretty sure this got heavily nerfed for controller players and it doesn't really work all the time but if you're on keyboard i think it works a lot more consistently because keyboard so players have a separate P. button for going so prone P. and it's I'm not tied to their crouch button. I still tend to pull back on my left analog stick when going prone, mostly out of habit, even though I don't think it works that often. So that's just something for you to be aware of. And just like all the other skills from before, make sure to shoot a lot of bots and practice drop shotting in a game to find out when this works best for you. Now the last basic movement skill is diving, but I'm actually gonna hold off on talking about it until the end of this video because there are some settings and things you need to adjust to be able to do it. So it makes a little bit more sense really to talk about it there. I don't really dolphin okay, dive so we've anymore. we made it through all the basic exercises and now assuming you've learned all these movements and practiced these drills to become really good at all of them the next step to becoming a good movement player is to reach what i call mechanical flow state now flow state is kind of a buzzword but what it basically means is to be fully immersed in what you're doing and focus on a single task or activity so what i mean by reaching mechanical flow state is you have to get to the point where you no longer have to think about your movement at all you're able to do all these movements together in different combinations one after the other depending on what's needed in the gunfight and it's all just muscle memory because all you're thinking about Ooh, is the enemy that you're trying to shoot and kill Oh my god. And the best way that I've found to get to this flow state point is to practice chaining all these movements together in different combinations while shooting at targets. So what I do is I just make up these little movement courses where I try to practice all the movements together in a way that makes sense with the cover around me, like how I would actually use it in a gunfight. Now there's an endless amount of ways to do this, but here are three movement combos that I think are really helpful. Now the first joints. is this, this one, where I simply slide cancel back and forth while shooting at a target. Now we used to be able to chain slide cancels together infinitely. Actually, I mean, y'all may think like this is like boring in a sense, but bro, like if you're like a bot, like if you if you have like no like sort of like idea what you're doing in COD, bro, you watch this video, bro, you just got all like the the hidden gems type shit. Like these are a lot of things that good players do, but they just don't even like really talk about. DreamStack's really good at like making videos for people who are like like the baseline players who just picked up COD. And I think this drill is really helpful because it gets you in sync with the button timings that you need to chain slide cancels together as fast as possible. Because like I mentioned earlier, slide canceling is great because you can change your momentum and change your direction very quickly, and it makes you a really tough target to track Ooh, and hit in gunfights. Shit on that guy. And once you get good at that, the next movement chain is to pick two targets where you have to slide cancel around a corner each time to shoot at them and i think this drill is great because in real matches there are a lot of times when you need to clear out buildings quickly and check a lot of different rooms for enemies Damn. so being able to accurately center your crosshair as you're going around corners is a great skill to have and finally, we have this slide cancel jump combo. And what I like about this is that by jumping out of the slide cancel, you can go pretty far in the opposite direction that you were sliding from. So this can be really useful in a gunfight because you're going to be very difficult for your opponent to track. Now, aside from that, it's really up to you to create your own movement courses. I would just encourage you to try to pair up all the different movements together so you can get all of them into your muscle memory. At this point, it kind of becomes like a game. You just want to keep adding more and more movement Literally. combinations to your arsenal and get as comfortable as you can. It's like basketball with handles. You just keep putting shit in your repertoire. Can using them in different scenarios. The overall goal for these exercises is to have your movement become instinctual and also have it not negatively impact your aim. If you have multiplayer, I highly recommend shooting a lot of bots with these different movement combinations. And you can even practice kind of just dancing around them with movement to see what might work in an actual game. Now, before we get to the final step to become a movement king, there are some additional skills you need to know. First off, we have shouldering or peeking. Basically, this is just quickly popping in and out behind. Spell repertoire? I got nothing for you on that one. Let me, let me try to spell it. 
R E P and cover for information on what your enemies are doing. I like to roll my analog stick in a circle to peek as fast as possible. And I find that I use this skill the most when I'm plating up. Now the next thing to talk about is using doors. Doors are great in gunfights because they can easily confuse your opponents. Whenever I'm being chased, I like to shut them behind me before I rechallenge yep. because no one ever expects you to do that. Also, if I know someone's near me, I like to shut a door before I push them because once again, it's just something that people don't expect. And finally, if I'm low on health and I know I'm about to be pushed, I always try to heal up the corner of a door frame because as soon as they jump into the room, I'm able to run back out to give myself a little bit more <sighs> time to shit. heal or to try to reposition. So the important skills here are you need to be able to quickly shut doors as you're running through them. All you have to do is briefly look at the door and then press your interact button. But you also want to be able to burst through the door if it's not already open and then shut it at the same time. So make sure to practice that too. And next up, Zipline's got a major change with the new Warzone update. They're a lot faster now and the major thing you need to know about them is that you don't have to take them all the way up. If you spam your jump button right at the top and then hold backwards on your analog stick, you can actually fly off the zip line. This can be helpful to try to avoid dying to someone if they're camping at the top of a sure, building, sure, sure, but sure. just beware, it probably won't work against good players. Also, if you don't want to fly off the building, you can mantle onto the top by spamming your jump button and then holding forward. I would consider these movements something that are nice to know, but like I said, these things are only going to work against average players. Anyone decent is probably going to fry you out of the air if you try to do it. Okay, so moving on to cars. Now, and car plays are great because you can get really easy kills by doing some pretty basic moves. You definitely want to practice switching seats because almost everyone just blindly shoots at the driver's seat when they see a car. I don't think the visibility is very good, so most people can't really tell when someone moves. So when I'm driving a car and I see someone, I like to swap to the seat furthest away from the enemy and then lean out of the vehicle to shoot at them because That's the car insane. should give you a little what bit a of extra cover in the gunfight. Now, something you can also do is that when you're leaned out of a window and then press the exit button, you'll actually dive out of the car, which can be enough to surprise someone to be able to hit your shots. Okay, and the last couple of things to cover before we get to the final stage step to become a good movement player is you can double tap your weapon swap to cancel the long animation when you pick up a weapon and you can also use it to cancel a reload if you have to use your gun and then i can't have a movement guide without mentioning stims when you use one it gives you a little bit of watching this video makes me truly like like really think about how what we went through for an entire fucking year playing mw2 like holy shit like we really couldn't like we really were like like Oh my god, it was like playing COD with a fucking 90 pound ankle weights on each foot. Like the shit you can do now, obviously like Warzone 1 you could probably do a little bit more, but like bro, MW2 was so bad bro. Oh my god. Bit of a speed boost as well as regenerating your health a little bit quicker. So it can be really overpowered in gunfights to break cameras because you really mess up people's timings when they're Oof. trying to track you. You just have to memorize how long it takes to pop one and try to position yourself in the gunfight to not take damage while you're doing it. And speaking of clips and breaking cameras, I do want to mention that there are a lot of movement players out there who play on super high sensitivities and they do lots of 180 spins and they move their camera around a lot in gunfights. Now some of this is just to be flashy and make their clips look better, but depending on how it's used, you can actually make yourself a little bit harder to hit by doing this because you can change directions more quickly on a higher sense. However, something to keep in mind is that this type of movement mostly works against lower skill players and you typically sacrifice a lot of aiming consistency by playing on a really high sense. So I personally don't do it. But if you're playing mostly for clips, it can look really cool and there's nothing wrong with doing it. So you should definitely try it out if that interests you. But just know that it does take a lot of skill to be able to do this and still win your gunfights. And the final step to having good movement is demonstrated in these two clips here. And I I want to see if you can catch what it is. In this first clip, I'm chasing an enemy down the stairs and watch what I do to kill him. Ooh, I mean, he almost and lost, then in but. In the second clip, I'm the one being chased after I get bad timing at a window, and despite being almost dead, I'm able to turn the gunfight around and get the kill. I, I mean, that's now, it just. It might not seem like it, but in both of these clips, I did the exact same thing. I read my opponent's mind. I knew exactly what they were going to do, and I used my movement to get as far away from their crosshair as possible to buy myself time to hit my shots. This stairwell clip was actually pretty sloppy because I accidentally changed my guns, but the point is, I knew he was baiting me to push him outside the building. Yeah, he should have switched guns. For it. Every scenario in this game is gonna be different, but if you can anticipate what people are going to do and then use your movement to surprise them, you're gonna get a lot of kills. And the fastest way to get to the point where you can read people's minds is you have to aggressively push teams as a solo player. Putting yourself in high stress situations will force your brain to think faster under pressure. And even though you're gonna die a lot, you'll eventually start to see patterns oh, and be able died. to guess what your opponent is gonna do. This is why a lot of casual players think Warzone pros are cheating. But the fact is most people on the map are pretty easy to read once you put enough hours 
hours into playing aggressively. So here are all the settings for my controller and for movement. So that what he just said right there is probably one of the biggest facts that like no one ever says, but it's so true. Like, bro, that was such a good fucking point. That there's a that's a re that's one of the biggest reasons why a lot of people think streamers are cheating, bro. A lot of the time, like a lot of when we're playing COD eight hours a day, like you you almost know what the other unless you're playing someone like another pro you know what a bot's gonna do like you know what like an average player is gonna do against you in certain fights in certain scenarios you know ex you almost can read exactly how they're thinking because you fought like you fought like those type of players so many times <clears throat> obviously when you fight like the higher tier players like when you fight aiden or somebody like you never you it's hard to predict what they're gonna do because they're trying to do the same thing to you um so like you do like tricky shit like but like, bro, when you're playing against like full teams and just always pushing guys, you can almost read every player, especially in one on one fights. It's, it's you almost can guess what they're gonna do all the time. But a lot of people think it's cheating. But that's a great point, though. That I'm currently using. Like As you'll see, I don't have my dive button enabled because I'm using slide only. There's this weird thing with the game engine that you get a small delay if you have both slide and dive turned on. This is something I'm still experimenting with because diving is really useful. So I'll let you know what I end up using long term. But if you've made it this far in the video, I want to thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. And I also W video, Dream Strike. That's a good video.